make our way up Harpers Road and head back in towards town and make our way out to our morning tea stop. registration tags in their ears depending on who owns the cows. So even though the cows are free to roam wherever they like, they will always stay in the area that they get dropped off in. So if they are put down here in the Cascade area, they will stay here until they get relocated by their owner. It's quite neat when you watch the, the cows being moved from one place to another because you've got about two or three drivers and vehicles trying to guide these cows in the right direction and usually their kids um, kids of the farmers these days will be running out along the side of the along the road to guide them in the right direction, make sure they don't go backwards and yeah, so it's quite neat to watch actually. Now once a year they advertise in the back of our Norfolk Island newspaper, which comes out every Saturday morning, uh, they advertise a list of everyone that has cows on the road and how many. And sometimes you look at this list and you think, hang on, that's a three-year-old child. <laughs> So they found a loophole. You don't have to always put it under your name, you can put it under your child's name or your grandchild's name. And then you can have more than 10 cows on the road. Now all of the cows are basically just for meat purposes, so for, for beef. It all stays here on the island, we don't export any of it. We import a lot of beef and lamb just because our local supply is not enough to uh, cover all the locals and the tourists. There is one couple that I know of that do milk cows and they, they only have a couple of cows and they milk them and sell their milk to the butchers, either the one in the mall or there's the butchers opposite the airport. They still make cheese? No, I'm not aware of anyone using the, uh, the milk to make their own cheese. We do have a, there's the goats, uh, Hilly Goat Farm. Yes. She makes goats cheese. There is actually a cheese tour on the island that you can that you can do, but I'm I'm not actually 100% sure where they get their milk from to make that cheese. So this is View Cascade Road, just in case you're looking at a map later on. roads have been recently resealed. I'll explain a little bit about that when we get round by the airport. But this is one of them. We have one radio station here on the island, 89.9 FM, and that's coming up on the left hand side where the large satellite dishes are. And then you'll also see a green building with lots of solar panels on the roof. That's the Norfolk Island Police Station. We have seven federal police from Canberra that come to the island. There's two lockups in there, which luckily for us, they don't get used very often. We're fairly crime free. Here's the police here in front of us. We don't lock our houses or our cars. You'll find the keys in my truck. If you wanted to go for a drive, you just hop in and go. <laughs> I'd rather you didn't, but you know, the option's there. <laughs> Now, if you have any problems with your cell phone while you're here and you'd like to get a Norfolk Island SIM card, Norfolk Island Telecom is coming up very soon on the right-hand side and they can assist you with all of that. If you're on a contract already, you can turn on your roaming, but roaming is very expensive, so I'd highly recommend you don't use it, okay? Well, that's the uh, brick building coming up on the right. 
Now, if you've already got some tours pre-booked with us at Pine Trees, uh, if you could please pop into our office after this tour so that you, we can confirm your tours for you, provide you with vouchers and let you know what time your pickups will be uh, for each tour. Our office is straight ahead here at the roundabout. We're open Monday to Friday, 8 till 5, and in the mornings on Saturdays and Sundays. This is also where you can book any of our other tours as well. So that's at our Pine Tree Tours office. We have the Norfolk Mall coming up soon on your left hand side. This is our main supermarket. We're open until six o'clock every single day. Inside the same complex, there is a butcher's, bakery, pharmacy, and a trading post. So that's just here on your left hand side. Bowling club on the right, brilliant place for a beautiful meal. A decent pub meal, awesome sizes, and great prices, okay? I don't get paid to advertise for anybody. I just tell you the places that I like the most, okay? Uh, the Bounty Centre Toy Shop on the right hand side, the largest toy shop in the Southern Hemisphere. So make sure you pop in and have a look there. Visitors, visitors Information Centre is coming up on the right hand side where the two flags are. You can also book tours from in there. And just in the grass area behind the Visitors Information Centre is where the Farmers Markets is held on a Saturday and then just in the front area on a Sunday for the Arts and Crafts uh, on, a, uh, on a Sunday, yeah. If you find it's after six o'clock at night and you'd like to get a few snacks to go with your cup of tea or packet of noodles for dinner or anything like that, there is a smaller supermarket just down here on the left on the corner. P and R Groceries, they are open until nine o'clock at night. And they're in the same building as Australia Post. Don't have oh, they do have some things. Oh, no. This is our car sales yard on the right hand side. He's a little bit short on vehicles at the moment just because uh, he had 14 cars offloaded off uh, December's ship because we needed more food than we do cars. So he's hoping to have lots of cars uh, coming in on this next ship. If I was to follow this road around to the right hand side, it'll take us straight back to the airport where you first came in. But we're going to head to the left and go down at Fernie Lane. The airport is just here on your right hand side. Our airport was built in 1942 by the New South Wales Department of Main Roads. don't need to go for a massage while you're on the island, just come for a drive along these roads here and lean back and relax. Some of our best roads down this one. Last year our airport was totally resealed, resurfaced, and that was another massive ordeal. So we had a big ship come to the island carrying gravel and we had a tugboat that would tow the barge out to the side of the cargo ship, uh, out to the side of the, um, the gravel ship. And they would lower all the gravel onto the back of the barge using massive um, excavators and diggers and all those kind of things. And we built a groin in our Ball Bay area. The Ball Bay is out near Seals Point. We built a groin there. And what the tugboat would do is it would tow the barge into the Moor Bay area, back it up against the groin, lower down the little bridge, and then we had all these massive trucks drive onto the groin, onto the barge, all the gravel lowered into the back of the trucks and then driven out here to the airport. So it was a massive ordeal. Again, it could only be done when the, the seas were flat enough because you couldn't have the barge sitting out in large waves if it was full of gravel. They were meant to do lots and lots of night shifts. In a way, it was lucky that COVID hit because it meant that they could work during the day uh, because we only had two planes flying here during COVID. One from Brisbane, one from Sydney. And that was basically just for people with medical conditions if you had to go away to have certain things checked. We needed a way for our locals to get off the island. And you 
had to apply to be able to leave. So once Boral, which was the company that uh, resurfaced the runway, once they were finished, the rule was is that they had to resurface a lot of our main roads uh, that they'd driven their trucks on during that period of time. I believe they were meant to do about 10 kilometres of road and they only had enough gravel left over to do three kilometres of road. So that's why some of our roads through town have all been redone and then a lot of these roads out here haven't been touched. So it's a shame they just didn't have more gravel uh, to be able to maintain some of our other roads. This area here is called Longridge. <coughs> and we're turning down New Farm Road. So we're probably about seven or eight minutes away from our morning tea. We can book that for you at Pine Trees. So that's her driveway there. There is a walk that you can do through the 100 Acres Reserve. It's a beautiful bush walk uh, that leads right out onto the cliff tops. And I'll show you where the best entrance way is for that in just a moment. Now, whenever anybody gets married here on the island, or if it's the year 12 students have got their formal, anything special like that, they always come out to this area to have their photos taken. And it's because of our fantastic Morton Bay fig trees. We have four of them. And they're about 170 years old. So they'll be coming up on your right hand side. So make sure you come back out this way if you like to take some good photos amongst all the roots.
beautiful, aren't they? There's a restaurant just in here on the right called The Homestead. This is not a pub meal. This is where you come for your really nice fancy food. Owned by a young local couple. And if you'd like to go for a walk through the 100 Acres Reserve, just park your car here on the right hand side and the entranceway is just in there on the left through the gate. coming down to Headstone Point. Now when we get to the end of this road, you're going to be looking at the St Barnabas Chapel. Now we're not going to be stopping there just yet, we're going straight to morning tea, but when we come back here after our morning tea back to the chapel so that we can go inside and have a look around. So it's an Anglican church and it was built by the Melanesian Mission. So the Melanesian Mission were here on the island from 1866 to 1921 and it was, for the, it was a British based organisation for the caring of island people. So they had their own ship and they went through the different islands, mainly the Solomon Islands, and they would bring people here for two to three months at a time so that they could learn about Christianity, agriculture and other industries. During their time here on the island, they trained about 14,000 people. So after their two to three months stint, they would then head back to the Solomon Islands and they would spread the word of Christ and show them the new skills that they had obtained living here on the island. So they built a lot of dormitories and training classrooms, as well as building the St. Barnabas Chapel. So when they left the island in 1921, they demolished all their dormitories and all their classrooms, but they left the St. Barnabas Chapel where it is, which is fantastic. The St. Barnabas Chapel is on the list of the most iconic buildings and structures in all of Australia. So we are number four on the list. So number one is the Sydney Opera House. Number two, Sydney Harbour Bridge. Number three, Flinders Railway Station in Victoria. And number four is the St Barnabas Chapel of Norfolk Island, which is pretty special. So we'll come back there after our morning tea. Where we're going for morning tea, it's at our property called On the Cliff, which means on the cliff, because it's right on the cliff. Now when we operate our island fish fry evening, we've got one on tonight, so it's normally Tuesday night and Thursday night, we have our island fish fry right out on the cliff top. And that consists of a beautiful buffet feast, even if you don't eat fish, if you just let us know when you book it and we can arrange a chicken option for you. You'll be entertained by Trent Christian, who is originally from Pitcairn Island, he's still got family living there. And then after you've had your meal, You've had your coconut pie for dessert. You'll have uh, the Bounty Beauties come and perform about four or five different dances for you. So they're our island dance group. It's a wonderful, wonderful evening. That's the island fish fry. So that's held at the same property. Where we're going to on the property though is in the undercover area. But once you've had your morning tea, you're welcome to go for a quick look out along the cliff top. We'll probably be here for about uh, 25 minutes. When you walk in the front door, there's a little basket just on the right hand side. You just pop your $5 into the basket and take whatever change you need as you go. There'll already be a Pine Trees uh, staff member out there serving the coffee from one end of the table. And Max and myself will be down the other end of the table serving you your tea. You'll find the milk and sugar on a table behind us. And then you just walk through a little room to pick up your scones with jam and cream and head out to our beautiful veranda. So if you'd like to come and do the island fish fry tonight, you'll need to come in and let us know um, straight after this tour, just so that we can let our caterers know. If you come in any time after one o'clock, they probably have already closed off the numbers for tonight. It's a fabulous evening, you get a great taste of all the wonderful food uh, we have available here on the island. The 
progressive dinner is also another great tour if you like meeting your love food. So we pick you up at about 6 o'clock at night for the progressive dinner and we take you to three different homes to enjoy three different meals. One for your entree, one for main and one for dessert. Your host will tell you a little bit about their property, how they built it, um, where their family came from, all those kind of things. It's a wonderful evening. And we get you back home by about 9.30. We do that on a Monday and a Wednesday evening. So that's the progressive and dinner. So I'm gonna drive you down to where we normally host our island fish fry first, just so you can have a look at the view. And then we'll come back up here for our morning tea. grey building here on the left is the restroom so you can just walk back from the outside veranda to use those whenever you need to. And down here is where we host our fish fry. We get the best sunsets out here. Right on the water. Not bad is it? It has started getting a little bit cold once that sun goes down, so if you do decide to come out here for the fish fry, just make sure you bring a light jacket with you. You can either drive yourself out here, or for an extra $11, I think, we can drive you out in the bus and take you home. It is BYO, so you can bring your own alcohol, or there is a cash bar available as well. If you drive yourself out here, you need to be here by 6 o'clock. But if you come out about 20 minutes earlier, you can look over the cliff and hopefully still see some turtles. Well, let's go stretch our legs and enjoy some scones. So what night do you have that fish fry? Uh, so there's one on tonight, and the next one will be Tuesday night. So Tuesday, Thursday. There's a convict, convict dinner on Friday. about the chapel. Once he's finished with his spiel, you can then take as many photographs as you like inside the chapel and then also go for a wander outside. There is a bell tower to the right hand side of the chapel. We just ask that you don't ring it, please. As tempting as it may be, it's an indication to the island that there has been a death. So we'd rather not. Someone died. <laughs> You'll see a few of these little uh, fruit and veggie stores around the island too. See this one here on the right hand side? So keep your eyes peeled. Sometimes that's the best place to get some of the fruit and veggies. There's just a little honesty box that you can pop your money into.
straight ahead through the windscreen area very soon, you're going to be able to see a monument in that paddock there. That is called a can. It's a memorial can. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, it used to be the burial site for anybody that was here during the time of the Melanesian mission. Now, you'll see just to the right, uh, so to the left hand side of the chapel, there's a memorial garden. Okay. So all those headstones used to be down in that paddock near that memorial can because uh, that's where everybody was buried. Problem is, is the uh, cows thought that they were a brilliant thing to scratch up against. So in order, order to uh, make sure they didn't break, we took all the headstones and brought them up here to create a memorial garden. So no one's buried there, they're all buried down in the paddock essentially. Now there's also a very large ficus virens tree. That's the tr big tree just sort of to the, uh, to the back of that memorial garden. It's native to Sri Lanka. We're not sure on the year of it though. It's been here a long time. But we're just going to head straight inside first and grab a seat and we'll listen to Max give us a bit of a, a talk about the chapel. And then you've got plenty of time to come outside and go for a wander through the memorial garden and have a look at the big tree at the back as well. Thank you. 
the men who trained here at the college. They became missionaries, and they were given the Santa Cruz Islands. Their names were Fisher Young and Kevin Knowles. Now, to the altar of love and behind that area of the five there are some five windows there, folks, from uh, Second and Third Mountain. Second and Third Mountain, Second and Third Mountain there. Christ is the Santa Cruz. We left to right the windows of the four gospel writers of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Behind the altar, against the wall, a beautiful, simple picture. A picture behind the wall that is called a rear of us. I did say rear of us, but a funny word. R-E-R-E-D-O-S. A picture behind the wall. It comes up in the crossword puzzles all the time, folks. Get over that one and you won the crossword puzzle. A rear of us is a picture behind the wall. That rear of us is hand carved with walnut. The gold is set in a tiny gold mosaic line. The right hand corner over there with the lights on, the Lewis organ, the famous Henry Lewis and Sons of England, one of nine of that type of organ in the world today. It's been there since 1875. 385 shipwrecks, perfectly. And we now have four organs on North Island to play the beautiful instrument. Proceeding. What could be better for a wedding? You're not going to a sea of heads, okay? Here's the wedding, and you'll see inside that. Mm-hmm. It's much better, my word is. But it's the English Boys College Chapel of John Kitty. The Boys College is over there in the folks. In their church, they have a case in it. Westminster Abbey, good case in it. The Pews Art Museum, Cowrie, with the mother of her in a and half Felsham decorating the heads of the Pews. It all means something to them. We can't get in there. I'm trying to find out the years. Outside, to my, to this direction, folks, just outside here, there is a bell tower. Please, please, don't ring the bell. Quite okay for a wedding and a church, but the, record, the, the ringing of the bell, folks, will tell the community there has been a death on the island, okay? Please don't ring the bell, okay? Now, you're welcome to take photographs. But before you do, what are you going to do when you finish taking your photographs? You're not going to the bus. I'll show you where you're going. To the right-hand side of the doorway, there's a box on the wall. And it has a slot. <laughs> and may God bless everybody here in this one for Melbourne today, especially those that go to the right hand side of the box on the wall with a slot on the top. And you can form a skew along the car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Seriously, it goes to the maintenance of the beautiful building. That's where that's where you do it all for you. So they have the occasional hanging, do they?
goodness. as big as the church. I think they planted a long way from the church. Oh, it's a thrilling country. Yeah, I was going to say, you'd be able to go in and just talk, ask reception to see a nurse. Yeah, because you won't be able to get a doctor's appointment on the spot. Yeah. We have our very own language here on the island. It's a mixture between Old English and Polynesian Tahitian. So to give you a bit of an example of a bit of our language, if I were to say, what to wear? What to wear means, how are you? And you would reply, I go. If I said what to wear, yourly, that means how are you all. Yourly means you all. If I said see yourly Mola, see you all tomorrow. Mola is tomorrow. So some of the words sort of make a bit of sense. And then we have the ones that make no sense whatsoever. So we grow a lot of bananas over here. So the Norfolk word for, for banana is plum. P-L-U-N, plum. I go and eat some plum. I'm going to eat some bananas. If I was going to say I'm going swim, going for a swim, I think that's what I'm going to do this afternoon. I went Nawi. Nawi means swimming. I'm going for a swim. I went Nawi. It's a fascinating little language. a maze that you're welcome to go for a wander through. I think it's just a gold coin donation. Let's see if you fit into any of these parking categories. Mission Road. Mission Road then leads into Grassy Road and that brings us out at the bottom end of town. Okay. If you get a chance folks, make sure you go for a drive up to Mount Pitt. I'll show you the turn off for that. It's the second highest point on the island. It's about 318 metres above sea level. Mount Bates is actually two metres higher, but the viewing from up there is not as good as Mount Pitt because Mount Pitt blocks most of the way. There is a walking track between the two mountains, but you can't drive up to Mount Bates. But you can drive up Mount Pitt. It is a beautiful view up the top. You get a 360 degree view of Norfolk. Beautiful spot to go take a morning coffee or go watch the planes land or take off. And I'll point out that entrance way for you. the hospital here on the island. It's basically now just a GP clinic. So once Australia took over five years ago, we got rid of the hospital and some of the supplies. So uh, we're basically a GP clinic. We've got full-time dentist, full-time physio. There's about six doctors at the moment, I believe. And we've got about 20 nursing staff. We have an aged care department all at the hospital. So that's sort of like our retirement home here. Uh, because we all now have Medicare cards being part of Australia, it doesn't cost us anything to go to the doctors here. There's only the one pharmacy on the island and the pharmacy is inside the Norfolk Mall where the supermarket is. And the hospital is just at the end of this road, so I'll point that out when we go past as well. 
You're about to see the Botanic Gardens on the left hand side. There are 43 indigenous plants on display at the Botanic Gardens. Great little walk if you want to go for a walk through there, you're more than welcome. road here on the left hand side, that's the road to Mount Pitt. Okay, so you'll just come up Grassy Road straight out of the end of town and then turn right up Mount Pitt. just want to add that I did ring Mrs. Jowett yesterday after the seat for Freddie Jowett up on Mount Bates. Um, he said that, uh, she said that Freddie was not related to Edmund as far as she knew and that Freddie came from Yorkshire on his own and really didn't have any relatives. So as far as you know, they're not related at all. Still, it was nice to have a chat with her. Well, I'm going for dinner at a Bailey's restaurant. Just come through the turnstile. Cows can't get through that, but I reckon a cow could easily get through that. Across here is where Bailey's is. The Governor's Lounge. Lounge Bar and Cafe, Bailey's, and the boat ship. Look at the boat ship. Is. Bailey's, and through this one. Nice collection of flowers, flora. Oh, here we go. That's Bailey's in there. The music game, which is good. Do the bar. Bailey's, and I've ordered them. I've ordered the Bailey's salad as appetizer and the filet mignon. It's main and I have this lovely trail from the New Zealand. A glass of it. I'm just going to put it in my description. One tray salad has finally arrived. Very nice. It tastes very nice. I can recommend this place. Oh, my main has arrived. They've slid it half sauteed it or something, flambéed it or something or other. So I want it well done. Well, medium well done. Looks good. Now we're getting a few people. And we will get some art in this place. I've ordered a dessert, so it'll come. Deconstructed cheesecake, of all things. Mm, nice. 
Ja. Nee, nicht. Ich krieg keine Hilfe. Hey, so I'm still enjoying my lovely trout belly, pin on one. Because this place is called Bailey's, I may have one of their Bailey's as well. Yes, it's me. Still continuing on with my dinner. Waiting for dessert. Well, I'm leaving here now. Leaving this lovely restaurant. The Bailey's restaurant. I've got my bed. Bailey's. I'm going out here somewhere. I think I found my way. I can go that way, but... I think the official end departure is around this way. Yes, that's the gate out and that's the paradise on the other side. Oh, the young lad knew who the red light was. The jacket I'm wearing. Yes, it was the red light 2007 jacket. He even knew who race light was, which was great. Ah yes, I may have to explain. Race light is an English band from 2004. They're great songs. They're in, it's still running, it's still going. Johnny Burrell is the lead singer. They're two guys from Sweden. He's the bass player and rhythm player. And he's the guy playing drums. But now they've got some other people in it. I have a suspicion they may return to the uh, to the Swedish guys. I mean to enter this way. I'm trying to cross those cattle bridge. There goes another pine trees bus after dropping people off or something. Yes, it says it's low light, which it is. Coming into my hotel. Well, we're nearly here.